Hi there. Now for the first part of this question, we're asked to express 2x squared minus 12x plus 13 in the form a multiplied by x plus b all squared plus c, where a, b and c are constants for three marks. So if you'd like to have a go at this and haven't done so already, just give you a moment to pause the video. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go and see how you got on. Well, with this type of question, it's based on completing the square. We've got 2x squared minus 12x plus 13 then. And whenever you have to write this kind of thing in this form, it is called completing the square. And if you're unsure of this, you can always check this out on my website. Just look under completing the square in the tutorials. Okay, so to do this, I notice that we've got a 2 here in front of the x squared. And whenever you get a number other than 1 in the front here, you just pull it out the front of a bracket. So in this case, we're going to have 2 out the front of x squared, then minus 6x, and then plus 13 divided by 2. Now, we keep the 2 out the front, or whatever value you happen to have, and just put some square brackets here and then we open up some curved brackets and put squared there. And in here we put an x and then we always have the coefficient of x. In this case the coefficient of x is minus 6 and if we divide that by 2 that would be minus 3. Now you should be able to work out what x minus 3 all squared is in your head but what I'll do is we'll just write it over here just for the moment. x minus 3 times x minus 3. That's going to give us x squared. And then we'll have minus 3x minus another 3x, which is minus 6x. And then minus 3 times minus 3, which is plus 9. So you can see that what we've got now is x squared minus 6x coming from x minus 3 all squared. But we've got this plus 9. And we need plus six and a half. So what I'm going to need to do is from that nine take off two and a half or five over two. So what I've got inside here is the equivalent then of x squared minus six x plus thirteen over two or six and a half. Now I can multiply each of these terms inside the bracket by two. And so if I do that, I've got 2 times all of x minus 3 all squared. And then 2 times minus 5 over 2 just gives me minus 5. And this is in the form that we are asked to give the quadratic expression in. If we were asked to quote the values of a, b and c, a would have been 2, b would have been minus 3, and c would have been minus 5. OK, now we come on to the second part. And in this part, we're given that the function f is defined by f of x, which equals 2x squared minus 12x plus 13, for x greater than or equal to k, where k is a constant. And it is given that f is a one-to-one -one function. State the smallest possible value of k for one mark. So again, if you'd like to have a go at this, just give you a moment to pause the video. OK, welcome back. Well, the answer for k is that k equals 3. Just put it down here, k equals 3. So how did I get this result? Well, it comes from completing the square. If we were to sketch the graph of 2x squared minus 12x plus 13, it'll be the same as sketching this particular version, 2 times x minus 3 all squared minus 5. And when it's in this completed square form, it's very easy to sketch the curve. Because if we just put the axes down, OK, it comes from, first of all, knowing the graph of y equals x squared, a parabola going through the origin. Now, I'm going to replace the x with x minus 3. 
And what effect that has is it translates the graph of y equals x squared three units to the right. So we can take that graph and move it three units to the right. So that the graph is now x minus 3 all squared. And it passes through this point on the x-axis at 3. Just mark that in as 3 there. Now the next thing we do is multiply this by 2. And the effect that that has on our graph, or any graph for that matter, is it stretches it by scale factor 2 parallel to the y-axis and keeps this point on the x-axis invariant. So what you get is this kind of graph, okay? y equals 2 times x minus 3 all squared. Now, finally, we take 5. And if we take 5 away from this graph, what happens now is that the graph gets translated downwards by 5 units. So if we pull this down just a little bit, okay, say down to there, then this point at the bottom here, this stationary point if you like, has coordinates 3 minus 5. Now we're told that f is a 1 to 1 function. State the smallest possible value of k. Now clearly it's not a 1 to 1 function in the sense of the graph that we've got here. Purely because, for instance, if I took say this particular value of y on the y-axis where it crosses here then you've got this value of x which is at the origin and you have got also this value of x that corresponds to this particular value of y. What we need to take are values greater than a particular value of x which makes it one to one and it has to be this branch here of the curve. So I'll just remove this part. And so it's this part of the curve then that is given as y equals f of x. For any one value of x, there corresponds just one value of y now, a one-to-one -one function. So the smallest value that x can be has to be x equals 3. And that's how I got the value of k equaling 3. All right? Now, for the final part, part 3, what we've got to do is we're told that the value of k is now given to be 7. And find the range of f for one mark. OK, if you'd like to have a go at that, I'll just give you a moment to pause the video. OK, welcome back. Well, the answer is that f of x for the range has to be greater than or equal to 27. How do we get that? Well, let's just think about what happens then when k equals 7. When k equals 7, we're just looking at a point for x where x is equal to 7. So if I was just to draw a sketch graph of what we've got at the moment, OK, here's x-axis and the y-axis. Now when x equals 7, we just take it here, we're going to be looking at just part of this graph. So what I want to do is find out what the y value will be when x equals 7. So I just need to work out what f of 7 is. And if I substitute x equals 7 into here, for instance, 7 take away 3 is 4, 4 squared is 16, 2 16 is 32, take away 5 gives me 27. So I can see that at this point where x is 7, the graph starts from this point here at 27 and is going to continue on up. So we're going to get a graph looking, say, something like that. What would the range be? Well, it's anything greater than or equal to 27. So if I was to finish this off, I'd write, therefore, the range of f of x 
is, and that would be that f of x is greater than or equal to 27. Right?